Modern Warfare 2 is the most underrated Call of Duty. There, I, I said it. It's a fact, and to anyone that disagrees, Death to all who oppose me. That's right, I want to see everyone's top 5 Call of Duty games in the comment section right now, and if Modern Warfare 2 isn't on that top 5, ooh, we are going to have a problem. Oh, wait, what the flip are these on my face? Rose tinted glasses? <laughs> Jesus, Murphy, better take these off. <laughs> Wouldn't want one of these bad boys clouding my vision now in a Modern Warfare 2 retrospective, right? <laughs> in all seriousness, hello everybody, it is that time of year again. Modern Warfare 3's honeymoon phase is starting to wear off, and a bunch of people are now praising the hell out of last year's COD. Modern Warfare 2. Oh, well, maybe not. So I thought maybe I would be the one doing that today. Originally, I had planned on releasing this video back in October, just before MW3 dropped, because there was a whole lot of hate surrounding MW2 back then. But after I missed that window, I thought now would also be a pretty good time, because I'm still getting Modern Warfare 2 hate in my very own comment section. Come on, guys. This was on my last video talking about the dead era of COD. Bro heard one praise toward MW2 and couldn't bear watching anymore. Dude, if you're still here, I hope you're enjoying the hell out of this video because I'm gonna keep it real, no sugarcoating. Today, we got a lot to cover. If you guys wanna participate in future projects, I do run polls fairly often on my YouTube community tab, Twitter, and even Discord server. Modern Warfare 2 is underrated one, of course, and well, since then, quite a few people have been asking me, what do you mean by Modern Warfare 2 is underrated? I'd say firstly, the definition of an underrated COD means it's just a game that's quality is better than the vocal COD community makes it out to be. I'd say in the past mm, three to four years, Modern Warfare 2 probably is the most underrated COD, but that's not to say that it's the best COD out there, of course. It just gets a lot of unjust hate, in my opinion. I'd also like to keep this video specifically multiplayer focused, so let's get into what this multiplayer really did that stands out before we jump into some more notable negatives. Yeah, we're gonna be fair. Modern Warfare 2 wasn't a perfect game, but it sure as hell was a good one in my books. Maybe top five worthy, yeah! <laughs> Reason being, the things that I value personally most about a COD multiplayer are innovation that works, balanced gameplay, meaning nothing is blatantly overpowered, new, non-rehashed content, aka no remastered maps, visuals that make sense and look good. I want a vibe, not a cash grab, and the flow. Flow is a big one when it comes to COD. Some players don't mind bad spawns, like spawning two feet away from an enemy on a map the size of Terminal, but unfortunately that's an immediate turnoff for me. So no matter how much I enjoy the gameplay, if the spawns are bad, I'm docking major points. There is no room for this level of shipment paced brain rot in actual 6v6 sized maps, you know? Okay? If you allow that to occur, you did a bad job. But enough ranting about Modern Warfare 3, uh, how underrated was Modern Warfare 2? So reason number one, the best thing this multiplayer introduced was probably the universal camo system, followed closely by number two, the new universal weapon attachment unlock tree. The camo system takes the cake though, because it's the first system that doesn't make you repeatedly unlock the same camo 25 times or more, just on different guns over and over and over and over again. I think everyone in the COD community agrees this new camo system is definitely superior than the old one. However, I feel that my second take here is a bit more controversial. <laughs> a lot of people seem to have not liked having to use a specific gun to unlock another specific gun, and then using a different gun to unlock another specific attachment for all guns universally. If I wanted this optic, I would have to go to the gun that I have to level up to acquire that optic, but once I unlock it, I do get it for all of my guns that it's compatible with. The dislike for this attachment system kind of puzzles me though, because I think forcing players to try out new guns to unlock all attachments encourages a lot of variety in your matchmaking and gets you, the player, to branch out. Instead of players using the attack 56 off the bat and nothing else, people are now able to try out other weapons and potentially find another they enjoy using. Modern Warfare 2 also had a very balanced weapon system as well, so lots of people did enjoy using other guns, especially when Modern Warfare 2 made all its guns pretty competitive with zero attachments equipped, which is actually going to be my third reason as to why Modern Warfare 2 was an underrated god. Unlike Modern Warfare 2019, Cold War, and Vanguard, Modern Warfare 2's weapons felt almost or just as viable with or without any attachments equipped. Something that I found deters players from branching out to new guns in modern CODs is how hard it is is to level up a new weapon from level zero because it feels so underpowered against everyone else using fully kitted out weapons that are just meta. The systems that purely make guns feel better through a lot of attachments, <coughs> Vanguard, 
they push players towards grinding underpowered guns out on shipment. When no attachment weapons aren't as viable in standard modes, no one wants to put in any effort. It's an uphill battle. And because it's been like that for a long time, we've run into another problem with Modern COD. You don't want to do a challenge at all, even if it is fair? Hop your ass on shipment and get it done effortlessly and in record time. Modern Warfare 2 though, well, it does have shipment. I think having the naked guns feel just as competitive gives them personality and allows players to use them in standard 66 without feeling that dread when you run into a sweat using the TAC-56. You can compete in Modern Warfare 2. My fourth reason is going to be dedicated to the new equipment Infinity Ward added to this game. I love my Infinity Ward equipment innovations. This studio has been making them since COD IW, and they have not stopped since. The drill grenade is easily the best piece of equipment we've seen since Modern Warfare 2019's throwing knife that doubles down as a panic knife. What a good idea! And to put the cherry on top, Modern Warfare 2's Drill Grenade was the perfect piece of lethal equipment in response to all the Modern Warfare 2019 camping complaints. <laughs> this thing counters anyone sitting in a room, whether that be a power position or just a flank route. All you need to do is throw it at a wall, and there you go. Let it rip. <laughs> Beyblade. Of course, that's not all. I'm also a big fan of the tactical camera. It's super underrated, especially in the One Life modes. The Shock Stick is also a nicely balanced version of BO3's Shock Mines. These things activate immediately and force the players that walked into them to fire their weapons as they get electrocuted. They don't take any damage though. They just mag dump and they move slower. In BO3, these were just like mines that could stick to any surface and once they get activated, they stun you like a stun grenade. You also have more field upgrades like the suppression mine. You may have noticed how annoying the guardian streak is in Modern Warfare 3 this year, but last year they had an easily counterable version of that pesky lane blocking streak. Like literally, you, you just shoot it. It doesn't have much health. And I don't see anyone else pointing this out, so I'm going to be the first to say that this is a hella underappreciated field upgrade. There's also the inflatable decoy, which I found to be a pretty laughable gimmick. It sure makes for funny moments when it activates and scares you shitless. Battle Rage was also kind of neat. It could have been a little bit more forgiving on the visibility end, but it did grant players faster health regeneration, a free tack mask perk, and infinite tactical sprint while it lasted. The smoke airdrop was a so much better, more balanced version of Monofire 2019's white phosphorus gas streak. This thing can be placed on the map any where you want and it lasts for a shorter duration while only providing you visual cover for flanking large open areas. DDoS was also a really good upgrade to Modern Warfare 2019's EMP drone. This one is actually equipped to your character and it acts like a free equipment detector. The spotter perk can see equipment through walls but this device can detect it. Then once your field upgrade is fully charged and able to be activated, you activate it and it will disable all devices in your immediate vicinity. It's super useful and frankly underrated. My fifth reason, the maps had very diverse locations and color palettes. That's right, there was something the community heavily requested during Infinity Ward's previous COD, Modern Warfare 2019, and they delivered. Farm 18 looks like a much better version of Grazna Raid. I love that color palette. The race car map looks beautiful while still being very well lit and competitive. Plus it had moving race cars that whiz right by every so often throughout the match. Halo's Lighthouse was our very first of the remixed maps where it took a section of Estate's cabin and transformed it into this new set piece on a completely new map. The cabin itself is different. Like it's different, but it's still recognizable. Some rooms are removed, like this and this, blah, 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 blah. And even the staircase downstairs is like on the opposite side. Like it goes down the opposite way. They also finally brought back some snow maps into Call of Duty. And I'm so happy that the, the best map in my opinion in MW2 is a snow map called Himmelmet Expo. I love the visuals, and the gameplay flow feels like a new classic hit map on par with modern OG Terminal. Which leads us into my sixth reason. <laughs> sixth. Sixth. That's a hard word to say. Sixth. Hmm. Map layouts. <laughs> this game launched with 10 pretty banger maps with all unique layouts. Border crossing. It's thin and long and you got explosives everywhere. Unless you know how to flank the map properly. <laughs> La Casa. It's better than Nuketown by far. While it still does kind of give the players the same sort of vibe. You got Window Warriors, while the size is just a tad larger than Nuketown. Plus, it's more like a three-lane design instead of a, a two-lane, like what I would classify Nuketown as. DRC Zone 1. Looks clean. Plays fantastically competitive. And it has a vent for character. I mean, come on, it's a vent. Boom, 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 boom. 
Breenberg Hotel is based on a real hotel, and it feels a lot like a classic OG MW3 map. Resistance from MW3 comes to mind as a pretty good comparison. It's got so much character to each location, and the hotel room, the kitchen, the dining area, the park parking center with a huge window on the roof, all of the water fountains in the back providing cover, the catwalk at the center of the map, and it's even got a fallen chandelier. I'll keep going because man, I'm telling you guys, the map layouts in MW2 were something special. Halo's Lighthouse has more ground terrain height variation, while providing a large body of water all around the map to swim in. Tarak has less cover, sand dunes, ruined structures, perfect for all sniping playstyles. The Farm 18 map is like a donut with a wacky shotgun friendly building in the center. Coral Village, while it is a snowy map, it also lets players jump around on the rooftops like ninjas. It was sick! So I think you guys get the gist of it. I fucking adore the map layouts in MW2. Not only in One Life modes, but they played well in respawn modes as well. And rarely do I ever see a spawn trap. You can hop on MW3 right now and play one of the biggest maps like a state and still get spawn trapped. Modern Warfare 3 spawns are just god awful, man. <sighs> Anyway, number seven, the movement was phenomenal for a boots on the ground game. Sledgehammer Games back during COD World War II had asked the community if they should implement sliding or keep dolphin diving into their game. Unfortunately, that led to no changes, but in Modern Warfare 2, fast forward a couple years, they decided it would be best to have both of those movement mechanics in the game at once. No choosing one or the other. You can perform either one you want at any given moment. Granted, the sliding was pretty bad at launch, but it got better over time and I'm pretty happy with the buff they did give it. You can now use sliding effectively if you use it just before rounding a corner into a head glitch. I think it's pretty satisfying once you get the hang of it. And that's not all. We had sliding and dolphin diving, but also there's tack sprinting, ledge hanging, ooh. And on top of that, we also had swimming. For a boots on the ground game, I am just amazed with all the different ways you can move around. It's finally what I would say is on par with the Jetpack COD movement in terms of things to do. I like the variety and the balance they got. Ledge hanging, for example, allows you to get up to a higher spot, like taking a shortcut, but you'll be a bit slower and in return more vulnerable. That is the trade-off that I'm talking about. Swimming was innovative this year to only allow pistol combat. Unfortunately, while I love this idea, they severely lacked a good number of maps that contained bodies of water for effective flank routes. You got Vondel Waterfront, which was amazing. Easily the best map in MW2 with water. Then there's Hydroelectric, which just has too many water flank routes, which offset the flow at sometimes. And most of the combat is within the caves underneath the map. There's also Palo's Lighthouse, which was okay, but the water wasn't a huge aspect outside of the One Life modes. Himmelmat also had a small outdoor pool that cannot be utilized that well. Uh, that's it. <laughs> Three-ish maps out of 24 or so. It's so unfortunate, but hey, I didn't say MW2 was a perfect COD. I'm just very surprised we didn't see more maps that had water. When I think of water combat, I think back to the first COD that implemented it, Black Ops 3. And that game put it on so many maps, and a lot of different ways. Some water combat stretches across entire lanes, others are small flank routes, like to get under a bridge, or entering a building while staying stealthily hidden visually and audibly. But back then we never had ones like Himmelmet Expo that feel almost useless, or like how this pool makes the player feel almost trapped when they're inside of it. Nonetheless, I did appreciate all the movement options MW2 offered. It wasn't spammy like Mono for 2019 slide cancelling, but it felt balanced and gave the game flavor. My eighth point is going to be the flow. So flow is like pacing, how fast your next engagements are. Due to constant UAVs without the ghost perk being active off the bat, I think we saw some of, if not the best, most unique COD gameplay in a long while. Not allowing a crutch perk like ghosts to exist allowed players that earned a UAV to feel more rewarded for their hard work and effort. A UAV is still easy to take out. It's not an advanced UAV either. It only pings an enemy location every few seconds, so it isn't overpowered. But it is providing valuable information that keeps the map flow at a very nice pace. People that learned how to use the compass effectively during Modern Warfare 2019 and Vanguard were eating well when no UAV was available. But then also at the same time, everyone was being rewarded significantly more for when a UAV was up, allowing us to see the unsuppressed weapon fire and exposed enemy locations. From the base no red dots by default minimap to an upgraded version with red dots and location pings, that upgrade was very satisfying to see. If you had a good team as well, you could allow each person to earn a UAV, but call them in at different times so that the effect lasts longer on the map. Score-based streaks on top of that was a much needed upgrade, and I'm glad that they're back. 
The only issue now is that they don't loop, but I'll get into that later. Another thing that greatly contributed to the flow was the dead silence nerf. Dude, so many people in this franchise are not happy with this nerf, but they legit do not understand how much of a crutch dead silence really is. I'll make a video on this game sometime soon, but I've been playing a lot of Rainbow Six Siege lately. That is seeing. I found the bomb. It's right here. It's right here. Me. Me. Five seconds to go. Oh, it's a very sound heavy game. You gotta pay attention to all sorts of different sound cues, including footsteps. But after playing games like Rainbow Six Siege, Fortnite, and dare I say Mono for 2019, the thing that I've now learned about the COD players that say, Dead Silence is a necessary perk to play stealthily in COD, is not only salty players trying to give themselves a scapegoat for losing gunfights, it's not only ignoring the fact red dots aren't on the minimap by default, it's not just revealing how horrible players are at map positioning, but it's also an excuse for a completely different playstyle. Being stealthy is not being a speed demon that can get into the thick of action with silenced weapons, silenced footsteps, and a ghost perk while still coming out on top. Maybe and just maybe it would work if suppressors were giving guns significant downsides, and if footsteps by default were quiet, and if the maps were all cookie cutter three lane designs. Then I could maybe see dead silence being balanced with all the other playstyles. But as COD games stand now, Dead Silence is blatantly overpowered. In Modern Warfare 2019, Cold War, Vanguard, MW2, and especially Modern Warfare 3, Rainbow Six Siege actually balances its Dead Silence operator by making her run less powerful guns. I actually thought some CODs were going to go that route too at one point, but disappointingly they just had a knife and pistol image for their Dead Silence logos. It had nothing to do with Dead Silence itself in-game. Miss potential, man. But yeah, Dead Silence in Mono for 2 works like this. It plays a little high-pitched beep before activation. Enemy players can hear it if they are close by, which is nice. But yeah, people still gotta complain that they can't activate it stealthily in a game full of loud as fluff footsteps by default. It's just like the sniper community complaining about how slow snipers are now. <laughs> it's just ignoring the fact that their time to kill is essentially as fast as it takes to aim down sights. You ADS, you pull your trigger. If you're half decent, you'll get the kill. It's called quick scoping because it's literally being made into a playstyle. It used to be OP, which is why it is now nerfed. But I think that's about it for everything that I really liked about Mono for 2. If you got any more reasons that you'd like to add, or any personal stories that you'd like to share in the comments below, please do so. I'd love to read them. And I very well could be missing a few. But now, I thought it would also be quite a good time for me to be fair and point out some bigger flaws as well. So that's why I'm not wearing rose-tinted glasses as I look back in last year's COD in good light. <laughs> So first up, an obvious flaw was Season 1's content drops and Season 2's launch content drop. These seasons almost killed the game for a lot of people, including myself. I was not happy, I was saying how much potential this game had, but it was just not getting quite enough content, which was very strange for a 3 year dev time COD game. In fact, in my Why Do COD Events Suck Now Fortnite vs Mono Warfare 2 video last year around Christmas, I pointed out how Mono Warfare 2 is probably stretching itself thin now so that it can do well later in its year 2 life cycle support. <laughs> oh man, how wrong I was! I'm telling you guys, Mono Warfare 3 and the COD Hub are some of the biggest tragedies this franchise has faced. Talk about sabotage. Dude, if Mono Warfare 2 actually got year 2 support, getting all the OG MD V2 maps released throughout year 2, imagine how much better Sledgehammer Games' next COD would have also been. <laughs> not, not a buggy mess. <laughs> not, not, not a rushed campaign. Uh, maybe, a, maybe a zombie's made by them. <laughs> but now Mono for 2's just stuck as an under-supported COD. A COD that became outdated as MW3 dropped. A COD that became a disappointment in a lot of people's eyes as the year 2 rumors became a misleading leak that never got addressed by the devs, nor Activision, until MW3 MW3 was revealed last year. Late last year, COD devs used to address misleading leaks that got big in the past, one being Mono for 2019's overhaul, but now with Mono for 2's year 2 content, they stayed radio silent. Now I think we can all see why. Moving into gameplay as Mono for 2 stands now, the streaks were pretty well balanced, but the fact that they didn't loop 
again, yet again, was so under rewarding, man. In COD, streaks used to loop, meaning if I earned a UAV, a VTOL, and a gunship, I could restart cycling through my UAV again after earning my gunship. But now, and in the past five years or so, now, once you earn that gunship, you have to die in order to restart going for that UAV again. It doesn't make a lick of sense. And to top that, they dropped Modern for 2019's specialist bonus package, the one that allows you to earn all the perks in the game instead of earning streaks. It's kind of a bummer if you ask me. But there was also the new perk system that Modern Warfare 2 came up with that everyone seemed to dislike and hate out of proportion. I don't think that this perk system is necessarily good, I don't want to see it again, but saying that this ruined the game is just so exaggerated. I've already explained how the ghost perk getting unlocked later in a match helps the flow, but I really think that the people wanting to use it as a crutch are the ones complaining here. If you want to have a legit stealth class, you should get used to compromises. You can do things like run a lock-on launcher to shoot down UAVs out of the sky as soon as it spawns in. You can run a suppressor on your gun without much downsides. And the ghost perk still works about halfway through the match. Again, I believe it's just people wanting to abuse stealthy advantages in their run and gun playstyles. Also the headshot multipliers. I think that was a really big one that I really started to dislike in Modern Warfare 2. The time the kill in the base game was already so fast that I didn't really think that the headshot multiplier needed to be so high that it felt like you were dying to sniper rifles when really it was just someone mounted with a long range LMG or assault rifle. A really good way to balance it would have been to reduce the headshot multiplier at medium to longer ranges when aiming for the head feels more like a lucky shot due to recoil. This wasn't always annoying but once in a while you do notice this ultra fast time to kill when you're the one dying to it. <laughs> oh and of course you guys know this one. They freaking started adding furries, electric humans, superheroes, comic book villains, and much more through the item shop that year and completely ruined the theme of Modern Warfare 2. A lot of people don't seem to care even when it comes to $30 USD black cell skin upgrades that gouge every little penny out of you money whales each and every season. But I do. I care because this is the franchise I grew up playing and respected for its immersion it offered. People say keep realism to the campaign, but that's just missing the point and also telling the devs to water down the COD campaigns. Dude, I don't want a realistic COD campaign that doesn't have high stake action scenes, no World War 3, no main characters like Captain Price, no 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 no. I want immersion. I'm a simple fellow, or at least I like to believe that I am. Immersion is following your universe's own reality. I don't expect Captain Price to wear a clown suit on his way to kill Shepard on Rust. I do, however, expect Captain Price to smoke a cigarette after defeating the main bad guy that starts World War 3. I expect a few slow motion breach moments. I expect some crazy over the top roof chases, but I sure don't expect Soap to become a canon zombies character in the Modern Warfare campaign universe. Like what the fuck, who would do that? And this all goes for multiplayer too. I just want to relive conflicts in the campaign as a multiplayer game mode. It's suspending my disbelief while still appreciating the world that I'm in. I'm being immersed. When it comes to creating a loadout, I'm being creative within the boundaries of a military gunsmith. I'm selecting million and billion dollar military streaks to use against six other players. Six. Obviously in game it will feel like a lot more though because they respawn. Just like in the campaign, the same player model will respawn. You will respawn in the campaign if you die. <laughs> I'm picking a skin to use on every single match based on the map that has been chosen. Stylish. When I load in to see Task Force 1 for 1 on my screen, when the announcer in Search and Destroy says, you're the last one left, complete the mission. Or when each of the streets has their own announcer and pilots that'll scream, we're hit, we're hit, going down. That shit pulls me in. It's cool. It's an over-the-top action movie I get to play the main character of, but never have I ever wanted COD to devolve this low. It has just cashed into the fickle community that'll buy anything merely because it referenced another thing they find funny or because it looks like something that stands out. I can't stand it. And I think it really goes to show that the COD fans don't like it either. I went back to Mono for 2 during MW3 and all the players are pretty much running grounded military skins. So fuck yeah, thank goodness. These are my people. Hells yeah. And on that note, I think I'll end the video here while we're feeling good. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please hit that like button on your way out as it will help out this video in the YouTube algorithm and it will let me know that you really enjoyed it. Again, thank you so much for making it this far in the video and peace out homies. Have a good night.
Nice axe, bro. Matt Sucky. Nice axe. You the best. You the best. Hacking scum. Hacking scum. Everyone report this douche.